Alrighty then. So this tutorial is how to get your product grids filterable in WordPress when you build them in Webflow and convert them over to WordPress using your DESD 3.0. Now, a bit like the Shopify tutorial I did using the uh, filtering application, this also requires a plugin. With WordPress, you have a plethora of plugins that you potentially could use. And uh, some of the ones that come to mind is like Facet WP and Grid Builder and Search and Filter Pro. My favorite is Grid Builder WP. The reason being is I think it strikes a fantastic balance between ease of implementation, price point is pretty reasonable i think it's like 20 us dollars per year and the the actual system and the, the ui is very easy intuitive to use it also gives you as a final benefit it gives you two different ways to do this filtering you can either create and utilize the entire uh, filtering solution that, that you're able to do so you can customize it within wordpress quite simply and then just import a, a short code and it does it for you or you can kind of utilize your custom archive to design it 100% in Webflow and then utilize the filtering and the faceted search to kind of drive that. So extremely, extremely flexible. And uh, I'm going to show you both ways in this particular tutorial. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, you obviously need to get a plugin. Okay, so I've installed it. And first things first, what we need to do is just basically walk through and set up some cards and grids so that we got something to display. This is the how to use 100% their native stuff. So we click on all grids. So I'm just going to choose that e-commerce one and I'm going to import the data and it creates me a dummy one for it. Uh, now we just need to basically go and change the, the content query because it's referencing posts, which we don't want it. We want to be referencing products. So pretty straightforward. And we save that. Now, in terms of the card styles, all we need to do is basically go here and we can choose a card. So you can, you've got an option of creating your own one or you can use one of their pre-built ones. So we're just gonna use this one for the time being. And if I preview that, we will see they come through with the different cards. If you wanted to create your own card, it's pretty straightforward. So we'll just save changes there and you go into your uh, all cards. And again, you can either choose from your own one or you can create a card and use their drag and drop builder. Uh, this may be exactly what you need and kind of streamlining and saving you some time. But in my experience, sometimes this can feel a little bit of a backward step in terms of flexibility. So you may want to opt for the second portion of this tutorial, which will be marked down below. But generally, you can pretty much build a really great looking card off of this and you leverage the, the system pretty simply. Uh, we're not going to do that today because it, it just takes more time than is needed. So we'll go back to all grids. So we've set up that grid. And now what we need to do is basically create some facets. And it indexes everything that you want. So if you're ever not getting something coming through, you just need to hit this re-index all and it will pull in the product. So it just re-index for it, whatever reason. And it's got everything there. So what we need to do is we need to create pagination and a couple of filters. So I'd be able to search or sort or whatever you want, you can kind of create it in there. But first things first, we're going to start with pagination. Now, one thing to note is if you have an issue with pagination, like duplication or some random issue, the developer has recognized that, that sometimes there can be a conflict. So if you do have this, you can go into here and you can go filter archive pages. And if you scroll down, there's the limitations. And what they do is they give you some basically some some snippets of code that you can just run within a snippets application to strip out any default kind of pagination. So if you have an issue, check it that. Back into our facets. So now what we need to do is we will create the pagination one. So click on that, create a facet, call it pagination. We won't enter a facet title because we don't want to title our pagination. And we will just go into here and we will call load and we'll load more. So you can choose whatever pagination style that you want, but this load more when you hit it, it'll just put some more records underneath, which is quite cool. So save that. Okay. Now we need to create some filtering stuff. So we'll create another one. This is product. So we'll filter by price and we'll say filter by price and we will save that when you do this you'll see there's a generated css class 
And so that means that basically if you wanted to style this using Webflow, you can target that particular class and apply your styles to that. And that will carry over once the CSS comes across. Very useful. All right, so now we're just going to here. We need to change this. So you can see its taxonomy is on there, but we want to do that against price. So we'll go into custom fields, go down to here, and we will type price. And then it comes up with WooCommerce, and we want to filter by price. You have all these different things like and and or and different logic combinations. So you can get quite quite clever with your different filters and just have a play and see what see what needs to to work for your particular your particular site. Uh, so we'll save changes, and we will do one more filter. We'll do one for categories. So we'll create a, another facet, and we'll call this one categories or category uh, filter by category and save again. Nice generated CSS there. Go into here and we will create a checkbox. We will choose a product categories. There it is. And save. Okay. So that should be it. So now those facets are set. So now we can add them to our natively built product grid sensibly. So we go back to our all grids and click into here. And if we go down to grid builder, you'll see that the filters that we've added are there. So we just literally just drag and drop them where we want them. And hit save. Okay. So we go and we have a preview. Okay. So obviously we don't want filter by price to be a checkbox like that. So if we just head back into the facets, click into here, we go into price. And we can change the behavior from checkbox to a range slider. Save that. And that's done. Okay, so now that that fast is set, I've also gone a little bit forward and just because I noticed that my products didn't have categories selected, that's why that filter wasn't happening. So I've gone and added some of those and that's all sorted. So now what we need to do is just go back to our all grid, um, check on our grid, and we go into, uh, if we preview that now, we'll see that we have our filters by categories there and our range slider that we've just fixed. Okay, so that's all, all working and uh, looks pretty good and yeah, it's nice. Cool, so now all we need to do is basically embed that into our theme to make that work. So it's really, really simple. So again, what we just need to do is just go into here and you'll see here there's this short code. So we just click on that, copies that to clipboard, we head on over to our Webflow site and we just need to add in a shortcode. So if we go to the Udesley University, you'll see here it says shortcodes. Ta da! So just copy the shortcode element, head into here, and paste it in there. And what you can see what's happening is it's added in a custom attribute of shortcode true, but it's basically just a text object with the actual shortcode written, and it's identified with those uh, square brackets. Let's go back into the filter. Copy that short code back into here and just plop that. That's it. It will pull it in and it will work perfectly, basically, on what we wanted. Obviously, you need to style it and do what you want and go from there. Now, so now what happens if you want to do your own custom grid, custom styling, whatever it is, but you still want to have all the filtering faceted search and stuff like that. Now, this is the second part. And uh, it, again, it's equally easy. It gives you a bit more flexibility, but you have to do a little bit more work to kind of get this, the, the faceting stuff to work. Uh, again, it's all driven by short codes, so really not a, no drama. But so what I've done in interest of time, we've just set this up here and I've just created a simple filter area. Uh, and what we need to do is basically just drop in a collection list wrapper and then just configure it like you would any other CMS element. So for instance, click on name and you get name. Not hard. Uh, add things like your labels, your compare prices, add to cart buttons and stuff like that. If you want to do those types of things, just pop them into here and then it will it will convert across. So anyway, it's pretty straightforward. That is pretty much it. So now you've got to make a few tweaks to the way that this particular system works. So first things first, go over to settings, uh, scroll down and you'll see here filter custom content. 
make sure you check that on and hit save. It does seem to work without it, but the documentation says to do it, so I do it. And now if you click on this little thing, you'll see here it's got, uh, when enabled, facet with grid attributes, WPG content will be able to filter archive results. So that WPGB content is something that we need to include within our, our site. However, we need to do a little bit more to do this. So what we need to do, go into here, and if you go into filter custom queries and you scroll down, you'll see this example. And basically what we do is we place this little short code before our grid. So we just copy that. If we duplicate that short code, we'll just drop that in above there. And we just need to paste that. And that's done. Now, what that thing is doing is basically it's saying that everything that's coming next in the page structure, so just before our collection list, needs to be filterable. And it basically does that. Now we also need to add the pagination. So, and we do the same thing. So we'll just duplicate this and we will drop it, you guessed it, below. Okay. Now we need to make a tweak to our way our facets work. So if you go into here and we go into all facets, and you'll see we've got this. Our uh, shortcodes, but you can see here it says grid equals zero. And we need to basically say, we need to tell which grid it needs to be filtering. So if we click on that particular thing, paste that there. And now we head back over to our filter code. We can just grab this little bit here. and just plop that in there. Okay, so now it's telling that the, that's the grid that it needs to be filtering. And we need to do that with any of the filters that we do. Right. If you are, say for instance, filtering multiple different things or different grids within the same page, you need to add a suffix to, to the grid. And it's pretty straightforward. Just go like hyphen one or hyphen two, or hyphen three, et cetera. Um, and then that basically defines where that particular facet will will operate. Uh, and again, what you need to do is just go up to here and that would be hyphen one, for instance, to identify that that being hyphen one. So hyphen one, pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's done. We'll just get rid of those. And now we just need to add in our other little filters. So if we go into here and we'll grab category, and we'll duplicate this one. And duplicate that one, add a little margin underneath it, margin, and we will just grab those shortcodes. And the price one. Yeah. All right, so now we just need to do is just define those grids that those need to go to. So again, we just grab this WPGB content, save that. All right, publish it to save it, and you're done, okay? Figure custom attributes, wait for it to refresh, and download the code. Download, okay, drop this into your Desly, choose a theme configuration file, convert, I'm not gonna add a thumbnail because we don't need it right now, and download the code. Right, head on over to WordPress and this is the final step. So we'll go into appearance, theme, and we'll just add a new one, upload, activate the theme and test it out. So what we need to do is just go up here, we'll refresh the page and you'll see. So first things first is this is the first one that we did. So the one that's done and using the, the inbuilt grid system. So we can check that that's all filtering nicely and it works perfectly. And then if we go down to our other one, we've got the same thing. So we can just filter that how we want and job done. That is it, pretty straightforward. Couldn't be easier in my opinion. Hopefully you found the tutorial useful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you want. Cheers, bye.